Hello. Man escapes death from lion attack in Mozambique. Before the news in detail, here's a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give you maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to the evening news. My name is Uche Chuku Ebonam. The Anambra State Government has restated resolve towards reviving Igbo cultural values to project the enterprising and historical knowledge of Ndibo and Anambra in particular. The State Commissioner for Culture, Entertainment and Tourism, Honorable Don Onyenji, stated this in Oka as the world marks International Museum Day. We have details. According to the Commissioner, the world in marking the day emphasize the protection and celebration of artifacts and heritage materials which speak about the history and generational development of various peoples of the world. The commissioner explained that Anambra State is blessed with Iboku Museum which is supported by the federal government and disclosed that the Soludo administration intends to upgrade it and has currently set activities in motion to search for the state's artifacts throughout the 21 local government areas of Anambra State to get more artifacts yet to be harnessed to fill up the Ibuku Museum and produce more where necessary. Commissioner Onyenji, who further disclosed that the Ibuku Museum has become a major attraction for global scholars to increase their knowledge about Nigeria and Anambra State in particular, commended the Ibuku community for their roles and contributions so far in making the museum a center for preservation of Ibu cultural heritage. The Commissioner for Petroleum and Mineral Resources, Vice Tony Ifaya, says the Salute Administration is committed to executing all its robust programs and policies to transform Anambra State to a livable, prosperous homeland where security of Indian Anambra is guaranteed and their welfare assured. Speaking to newsmen in Oka, Barista Ifaya pointed out that the administration has shown its determination to achieve this noble objective by setting a peace committee immediately at its inception to work out modalities to return peace to an Anambra state, while describing peace, unity and mutual coexistence as the cornerstone of success of any society. The Commissioner called on Ndi Anambra to give full cooperation to the committee to achieve its noble role. Barisi Fanya remarked that no government can succeed in an atmosphere of violence and applauded Governor Saludo for establishing the committee. The Petroleum and Mineral Resources Commissioner assured the youth that the present administration is determined to work assiduously to create employment opportunities for them by boosting entrepreneurship and establishing more skill acquisition education. Commissioner Fanya extolled Governor Saludo for his courage, patriotism, and commitment to peace by visiting Nam de Kano in Abuja as part of his wider consultations with critical stakeholders in search of lasting peace and security in the southeast. I remarked that his singular act of the governor clearly shows his avowed determination to bring back peace and security that have eluded the geopolitical zone for some time now. Governor Chukuma Saludo has been commended for driving his administration with open door policy and inclusive governance. The convener Anambra Demand for Saludo Chief Jude Emitata gave the commendation while speaking with journalists in Oka. Paul Izoke reports. Chief Amateur said Governor Saludo's wide consultations and interactive sections with stakeholders across the country have provided opportunities for people to make inputs and contributions towards achieving the governor's vision for the state as well as encouraging their number to take ownership of the state. He pointed out that the governor's giant strides towards entrenching new sanitation culture for environmental sustainability and courageous approach to restoring law and order in the state have demonstrated his resolve to deliver his manifesto and justify his mandate. Chief Amechata asked the people not to put undue pressure on the governor to avoid distracting him from his vision, noting that the governor has the strength of character to overcome present challenges confronting the state. 
On the forthcoming general elections, Chief Emeshita called on eligible voters who have already registered to collect their permanent voters' cards, PVCs, while those who have not registered should do so, urging political parties and the aspirants to encourage and support their members to obtain their PVCs to enable them to vote during the elections. He also urged political parties to provide a level playing ground for all aspirants in their primary elections by upholding their constitutions and respecting the Electoral Act and election guidelines. Also so speaking, the National Patron and member Board of Trustees of Anambra Demand for Soludo, Chief Henry Boeli, said Governor Soludo's consultations with India Anambra in various parts of the country and visits to Mazinam Dikano at a detention facility in Abuja have demonstrated his resolve to give everybody a sense of belonging and fight for the welfare of the people, which he noted has restored people's confidence in governance. Chief Boeli observed that the governor is gradually changing the mindset of the people and rebuilding bridges of trust through peace initiatives and dialogue to restore stability, progress and development in Anambra State and the entire Southeast Zone, and called on other governors to emulate his people-oriented administration to bring a new dawn in the region and country. Inaka, Paul is okay, ABS News. On health, a matron within Namdi Ezekiwe University Chief Hospital in Newe, Mrs. Beatrice Okeke says anybody that will raise his or her hand to kill a fellow human being is sick. Queen Anne Borgo reports that she disclosed this at the Redeemed Christian Church of God House of Grace Zone, Amengi Oka. Mrs. Okeke maintained that Nigerians are under serious stress, hence are easily provoked, noting the need for them to deal with the stressors to enable them live a healthy life. For one to live a healthy life, the Metron mentioned three key factors that must be put inside into consideration to include nutrition, exercise, and environmental and personal hygiene. Mrs. Okeke also encouraged Nigerians not to wait till they become sick before seeing their doctors, but should make medical checkups regular in their lives for earlier detection and treatment of diseases. Speaking of water therapy, the Metron pointed out that the importance of water to human body cannot be overemphasized, adding that re it reinvigorates the skin and equally enables for the proper functioning of the organs of the body. Special prayers were said concerning insecurity ravaging Nigeria as a nation. Today is World AIDS Vaccine Day, marked across the globe. Every year on May 18, World AIDS Vaccine Day or HIV Vaccine Awareness Day is observed globally to help spread awareness about AIDS and its immunization measures. The day also highlights the importance of the vaccine to prevent HIV infection in today's era where many healthcare workers, volunteers, students, community members and NGOs are working relentlessly to educate people about how to stop HIV AIDS from spreading and also what measures to take if one is infected by the virus. World AIDS Vaccine Day celebrated is rooted in a speech given by the then U.S. President Bill Clinton aimed at setting new goals for developing a vaccine, given the advancement in science and technology within the next decade. Still to come in the news tonight. Court strikes out federal government's amended charges against IPOB leader Nam Dekano. Man escapes death from lion attack in Mozambique. Here's a special message again. Ndjanam Breck cannot allow criminal elements to hold the state and the people to ransom. Donate generously to the Anambra State Security Trust Fund, which has been set out to raise money for combating insecurity in the state. We'll be right back after the break. Traveling? You deserve the absolute best. Enjoy maximum comfort in our new buses with more Lego reclinable seats, onboard entertainment, and much more. Pick your preferred seat, choose your preferred shadow, travel on your terms. Ready for a premium ride driven by the best captains out there? Book now! Welcome back to the rest of the news. Concerning Nam Dekano, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has struck out the amended six-count treasonable felony charge the federal government preferred against a detained leader 
of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipob, Mazi Namdekano. Child Justice Binta Nyako struck out the charge after he was withdrawn by the prosecution counsel, Mr. K. E. Kaswe. Kaswe, who is from the Federal Ministry of Justice, withdrew the charge after Kano's team of lawyers, led by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Mike Ozoeme, accused federal government of deliberately frustrating the speedy determination of the case. Chief Ozoeme noted that the amended charge was served on him barely 48 hours to the court proceeding. He maintained that federal government introduced fresh issues in the amended charge, including additional documents and proof of evidence that mentioned Kano's lawyers, Ifanye Jofo and Maxwell Opara, which are not originally attached to the case. Chief Ozogame said it was wrong for the prosecution to insist on proceeding with trial without rearranging the defendant first. Owing to Zoyama's contention, the federal government's lawyer, Kasui, appealed, applied to withdraw the amended charge to enable the matter to proceed on trial. However, the court did not grant Kano's bail application. And on business news, Nigerian palm oil producers are under pressure to meet demand for palm oil and its byproducts following the recent ban by the Indonesian government on exportation of its palm oil. The, de the development is said to have created huge opportunity to build palm oil cultivation and production in Nigeria. The managing director and chief executive officer of a private firm at Edo State, Mr. Owadele Agemume, disclosed this when he led a team of investors to his farm. Speaking to journalists shortly after the tour of the farm, Mr. Oge Omen said the Central Bank of Nigeria has provided funds to boost the industry, but they must pass through commercial banks which set their conditions or evaluations. Coming from Mozambique, a 40-year-old man has escaped death after being attacked by a lion in the southern Mozambican province of Gaza. The victim suffered serious injuries and is currently receiving medical care in a hospital. A local administrator said the lion that attacked the man had escaped from the Limpopo National Park. He said inspectors from the park and the local district government will begin measures to scare away and control stray animals that in recent days have created panic in the communities. Conflicts between wildlife and human beings are common in Mozambique and the most common wildlife involved in the conflict have been lions, crocodiles, hippos, buffaloes, elephants and hyenas. And on sports, Nigeria's under-20 boys flying eagles of a pod fit fighting Ivory Coast in an explosive semi-final match to reach the final of the ongoing Wafu B under-20 championship in Nyame. The last Tuesday night's March 2-1 victory not only gave them a ticket to Saturday's final match, but also came a ticket to next year's Africa Under-20 Cup of Nations scheduled for Egypt. NFF said in the statement on Wednesday, milk feeder Daniel Dagger put Nigeria in front after only five minutes when he cleverly escaped the attention of the Ivorian defenders to not in from a well-weighted pullout. The seven-time African champions then launched onslaught after onslaught on the Ivorian goal but failed to add to the tally before the Ivorians equalized just before halftime from an intelligently taken free kick at the edge of Nigeria's 80-yard box. Neither team could find another goal to gain upper hand before the end of regulation time inside the started general Samian coach and the game went into extra time. Ford Ibrahim Yahaya got the winner for Nigeria in the 111th minute of play when he struck in from the penalty spot to make in 2-1. Nigeria will square up against neighbors in the Republic in Saturday's final. Before we go, remember that you can follow news and program on ABS TV from any parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at ABS Television. Okay. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now the main points of media news again.
An unrested government has restated resolve towards promoting Igbo cultural heritage. Today is World AIDS Vaccine Day. Court has struck out federal government's amended charges against IPUB leader Nam the Kano. And finally, we told you the man has escaped death from lion attack in Mozambique. Here's a special message again. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for it to turn around maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. That's all on the evening news tonight. My name is Uche Chuku Ibunam. Thank you so much for staying with us. Good night.